there is something true in this litany against fear that I, I, I must not fear. We experience all these fears around us in the world, and there is a sense in which we need to let those pass through us. Yeah. We want to set those aside. But what we replace them with is the one fear that casts out fear, and that is a proper fear of the Almighty God. Interesting. So the idea that the fear is the mind killer. Like I, I think just kind of practically, the first time the first time I read that, just experientially, yeah. was like, oh, that that seems true to me. Like fear does kind of kill your mind, kind of paralyzes you. Yeah, the flight, you, flight or freeze response. Yeah, right? and, it, and it makes you misinterpret other people's actions, what other people say. Mm-hmm. You know, this one little thing happens, and if if you're you're if you you fear that all well, these people don't like me, and you you know, then then all of a sudden. You misinterpret all the all these things that are going on. You, you don't right. do things that you're supposed to because you're too afraid of failing, or you do lots of other things that you shouldn't be doing because you're afraid of what happens if you don't do these things. We can com- become yeah. these kind of control freaks that try to micromanage every little thing in our life and right. every every person in our life. Yeah. Um, and we try to become the the gods of our little universe that control everything. So it just experientially, that idea that fear is the mind killer, and we have to have to let it pass through us. Um, and how often in the scriptures does it say, "Do not fear"? I, I heard a, a, somebody say that uh, you know in the scriptures it says to be not afraid it's in one way or another, one phrasing or another, three hundred sixty five times. Yeah. I haven't counted it. I don't know if it's exactly three hundred sixty five, but the the message is like <laughs> you could go through the Bible, and for every day of the year, God has a message that is, yeah. "Be not afraid, be not afraid, be not afraid." And there's you know that famous. Catholic him from the seventies, be not afraid. Like, you know, as, as cheesy as we may think that is like, that yeah. is absolutely a message. That's, that was what John Paul II said, the second said, and his yeah. first speech as Pope totally. said, be not afraid because there's so much to be afraid of. And Christ commands us world. not to worry. He commands yeah. us not to have anxiety. Mm-hmm. That's so weird. I mean, like in some sense, some of his exhortation to not be afraid, to not fear, mm-hmm. to not worry about tomorrow are some of his strongest exhortations yeah. to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, St. Augustine's definition of virtue that Aquinas references and affirms is, you know, virtues are these good qualities of the mind that lead us to righteous action, something like that. And again, a quality of the mind, you know, a mind being kind of this, you know, the, our, our sense of our, our consciousness, our free will, our intellect, our ability to, to choose. And fear or, or emotions um, are not bad. They're part mm-hmm. of who we are, yeah. but they can't be what drives the cart. Right, you know, yeah, to yeah. use the Greek, the Greek image, they mm-hmm. can't be what drives the chariot. They're the horses. Yeah. They give us power. They give us movement. Mm-hmm. They're to be integrated, but they can't drive the chariot. Yeah, mm-hmm. you you have to drive your yeah. mind. You have to you have to keep that place. And so, looked at from that perspective, fear run amok or desire mm-hmm. run amok. Yeah, if that's leading the chariot. You're gonna have a car crash. Yeah, well, a chariot mm-hmm. crash. You're gonna have a wreck. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mind has to remain uh, open and free. And so. Again, the virtue of prudence is always this turning to to remain in the presence of God, mm-hmm. to remind myself of the freedom that God's given me, and that that if I'm fearing, I need not re- actually fear anything else because uh-huh. God is Almighty. I need not actually desire anything else because only God will ultimately fulfill me. Yes, and so it's uh-huh. resting. It's it's making a habit of resting in that place. You know, Brother Lawrence practicing the presence of God, mm-hmm. so that even when I encounter something that would cause me to fear, I can. I can step back a little bit. One of the, the, the quotes here I had, uh, the Fremen, the Fremen were supreme in that quality the ancients called Spannungsbergen. I don't know how to pronounce that. Mm-hmm. Which is the self-imposed delay between desire for a thing and the act of reaching out to grasp that thing. Mm-hmm. Wow. In other words, as we go through life, we, we experience affectively the things, but part of what we practice as as full human beings, as Christians, as people who are trying to be virtuous, is that that little liminal space that we keep between mm-hmm. the stimulus and our response mm-hmm. so that we can remain in control, that we can make the right choice and not just the instinctive yeah. choice. Mm-hmm. I take my time, flex like whoa. I take my time, just let's go. I take my time, flex like whoa, tell them by do. I take my time, flex like whoa. I take my time, just let's go. I take my time, flex like whoa, tell them by do. It's like this, though.